silent like you. She's concentrating, that's why. Don't worry. She'll have a lot to say up there on the surface. She's ready to give birth to the new life. But you're not ready. You must fill yourself with me to the brim, to bursting. It's finally time for Turgo. From what Ole said, it seems that Godsend could return to her limit all by herself. And she doesn't want to go to the next limit without us. So we may be screwing everything up by ascending her. We've committed to it now, though. She loves us, but she'll get over it eventually. I hope everyone agrees. This is the right choice. Hemenena 7 thinks that Oli deserves to be a bride. Like she wants. She deserves to live. Or at least get a shot at it. A bit of uncertainty there. Yunrace noticed this too. Oli was so happy when she first heard of us, and when we first saw her, she was swinging merrily on her swing. A brother took her place and she was smothered. We came along and gave her some hope, fed her some colour. It's only right that we go through with this promise we've made. Jameson had several sisters on his mind, eventually settling on Ole because she had so many dreams that won't come true without our help. All this talk of how she deserves it sort of leads to an offshoot of her being best suited for ascension. Shazor echoes an earlier sentiment that because she's closer to the next limit she would fit in better. Hobo by design considers many sisters, but Ole seems to be important, although in what way is very vague. In the end, she seems to want to go the most. What better reason? There's a few that say that Ole is more normal than the others. Glazier's pitches the void as something quite closed in, all of the sisters being enveloped by its darkness, aside from Ole. This normality, this vision of what the next world will be, could be very useful. Kijira says the same thing. She can see what's ahead of her, and she wants to know more. She can make the most out of the ascension. Again, Batham perhaps thinks the other sisters won't be able to fit in or appreciate the upper limit, having been lost and tortured by the Void for so long. She also has selflessness, which seems quite genuine now. Her ignorance has been brought up very frequently. Naivety, really. Wiz says she deserves freedom after being trapped in a half-existence with no more understanding of it than a child. Danger Doll says there's something about her interesting, the way that she asks questions, perhaps. Flamestorm wants her to find all the answers. Her innocence is like a child, and there's the envisionment of Godsend as her mother. Kenverons thinks she could get some answers by ascending, and Wandering Knitter thinks she can't do it where she is currently because she's in a mockery of the outside world, and she deserves to see the true colours that she's missing out on. Sparda219 also thinks she should be taken out of this horrifying shade of the world. All it does is add confusion and loneliness. Her innocence could be a great asset to the new world. I brought you here to show you what happens when a realm truly dies. This will happen to Ole's too, but I won't return to see it. This is the Scorpio, clinging to every tree. Each tree is lifeless and forever unusable. Eh, uh, perhaps not. That's why it's fairly important we get out of here, right now. Emerald. Violet. Emerald. This is cycle 35. There is no cycle 36. Ole is just brimming with life up there, but I need to reach that state too. The Void hasn't given me any violet or gold this entire episode, so I have no choice but to hunt for scraps. It's going to be a lot closer than I'd like. The problem with the worm chamber is that sometimes sprigs don't quite appear. There's some odd glitch. It thinks there's a worm there or something. I don't know. I'll stumble through it. Back to the vote and Ole's naivete. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, raw, raw. Bezel says that Ole's innocence could be perfect for the new world. A blank canvas with no evil where anything could happen. The other sisters have also had a chance to make peace in their own way. Ole's never been given that opportunity. Lenswork considers the minds of sisters expanding in the new world. Maybe all of the childish dreams that everybody has could come true under these circumstances. Or at least give her room to grow into her ideas, since she's not so set in her ways. Winter rain builds on this. If we send someone up with a sense of wonder, maybe they'll be able to seek out some unknown truths. Some voters just thought she stood out. Mu Cao found her unique makeup and bridal imagery stuck in his mind. There's just something about Ole that Blankdor likes, even though the only connection he's felt is to her frailty and compassion. Not a bad connection all in all. Crump's brother feels that Ole is the only one that says anything of weight when you open her third heart. Very partial to the verbose, and having made this LP I can't disagree. Azarol is just a sucker for a sad girl by a window. And Frugulus feels that Ole is the most out of place. She's the most human. There were a few odd votes too. Ouijiman decided on a 50-50 split between Ailey and Ole. Hey, it's kind of a reason. Three-sided die says, eat it, haters. Ole's world would own way harder than Ailey's. Ha, huh. you people can get me to say anything. Ted Joker seemed to be voting for Sister Death, and then at the end said, Ole will be my vote. Not sure what to make of that. Few people talked entirely about Ole's personality. Her compassion's been brought up before. And Not Invented Here thinks that her sincerity in urging us not to sacrifice ourselves will make the surface a beautiful place. Cypherderis thinks that Ole would be the coolest to have around if there was no void. Hey, it's a perfectly nice opinion. Zero to Sonic really admires the selflessness of Sister Death, but in the end if he can't choose her he'll choose Ole, so I assume he thinks that Ole has a similar strain of selflessness. Oatmeal Raisin sees the colours violet and gold, inspiration and trust, and thinks she'd make a world full of wonder and peace. Goat Lord also sees violet as the most artistic colour, and would prefer a world governed by trust rather than suffering, frost or consumption. Ole's final vote is by Goth Sheep. Ole spends all her time looking out a window, seeking others to bring her meaning. Like someone who's just moved away from home and is struggling with their newfound independence. We've been faced with this too, and both of us have been striving forwards. Everyone else is obsessed with ascension, but Ole just wants something to live for. Someone who will simply make the best out of any given situation is the only one who will have any kind of actual hope for a future after ascension. I can sympathise with these feelings entirely, and I find the imagery incredibly moving. Thank you, Goth Sheep, and everyone who voted. You have sincerely allowed me to appreciate the true value of all of the sisters. I was quite set in my ways when I began this LP, but through all these contributions, I have learned just as much about this game as any of you have. Marching up to Ailey. Commiserations. She came so close. Honestly, I thought the scales would tip at any moment. Nothing more to say. Well, while I'm here, I may as well try this. Draw this glyph over a sister, and she'll rip out one of her hearts for you. Aya's voice? What does this mean? Are you the same person? I can't rest until I unearth this treachery. It is the right of the brothers to take. He certainly turned out to be a good apprentice. Uta's voice now. Uh, are you all the same? Is there even a true one? Uh, has my decision been completely wrong? No, no. I must believe in Ole. But you can die, treacherous creature. Why well, feel sorry for these unborn, right? cares what she was dreaming about. She's not the last. But there won't be a...